Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is made by Floodgate Games, creators of Sagrada, and it is called Bad Maps. Bad Maps is for three to five players, but there's a two player variant, takes about 30 minutes to play the game, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Bad Maps, it's a mechanical movement style game in which you're gonna be placing cards down from your hand and moving minions around the board. You're gonna be playing as a ship's captain or a pirate, and you're gonna have minions that are gonna be moving based on how you place and how your opponents place as well. You're gonna have objective cards, and the objectives are gonna be to be to get first, second, third, fourth place, depending on what cards you're gonna be choosing, and how you arrange the minions or move them around the board is going to depend on how you, well you do in the game. Of course there's an X marks the spot in the middle and if you can get that minion that you need to get to the middle uh, then you're going to score points based on getting first place and whatnot. There's also specific pirates for each player color of the five and uh, there's char char characters like the orange captain and they have a specific boat, uh, specific uh, ability they can use. This one's called Smuggler's Boat. Play your next map card face down. But there's also a spyglass, simple spyglass card which you can allows you to utilize looking at a card face down. Some cards will be played face up and face down depending on these uh, blind cards that we're going to be playing in the game. Uh, so that's the basic idea of the game. There's two rounds to it and you try and score as many points as possible based on the objectives you have in your hand for that round. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the game and everything it comes with. So here we have bad maps and everything included in the game. And as you can see, it's going to come with a Board. Uh, there's a front and a back side so that you can kind of create your own board or simply use the basic map which I'm showing you here. The back side is basically just more of a blank board that will allow you to use these like little cave tokens and uh, these little uh, holes which you already see already imprinted on the board here. Uh, you're also going to see on each side is going to be a minion's color. There's minions and how you're going to place them is based on these little symbols here and the way their direction of facing is based as well on the board itself. You're also going to get two uh, round decks, round one and round two, and they're basically going to have uh, first last and second and second and third and all that kind of stuff to direct you as to how you want minions to be uh, on the board at the end of each round. You're going to get spyglass tokens which are going to be utilizing special abilities or at least let you look at face down map cards. There are these like black pitch out cards, whatever you want to call them, that are going to uh, tell you when you play a card face down and when you play one face up, depending on the number of players in the game. There's two players, three or more players, just as well as the rounds have four and five players in addition. Uh, there's, of course, additional uh, tokens that you can be using for the other side of the map, which basically represent this here, where you'll be able to place some tokens on top of them just to represent uh, where the starting spaces are, which is kind of cool as well. It lets you create your own little board. You're going to get a first player token, and you're going to get a minion token, which is basically where you're going to place uh, down depending on the first uh, minion that is placed, has a card placed in their slot. There are these little ghost tokens, and then of course you're going to have player decks. Each one of these player decks is going to have a directional amount, as well as uh, being able to move north, west, east, or south as far as facing a different direction. This is what is going to basically mechanically allow you to make minions move around the board. And last but not least, of course, is the box, the rule book, and your captains with an advanced and a basic side that lets you uh, have additional abilities or just simply use spy glasses to look at cards that are face down. Anyway, that's what you're getting in the game. Let's come up and explain how to start the game off, then I'll take you down below and I'll show you around or so. So to begin the game, bad maps are simply going to start off by placing the units down or minions on the board based on where they tell you to place them. Also give every single player a captain or of their choice and you can select the basic or the advanced side depending on if you want extra abilities or not. Give each player that captain's respective deck. So if you pick the purple captain, you're going to get the purple card here. There's going to be four movement and there's going to be four uh, changing of directions that you can have in the game. Then after that you're going to give everybody four cards, if you're playing a three player game, four of these little cards here for rounds and based on the number of players is going to incorporate more cards or less cards and these cards are going to say something like first place, last place, first or second and first and it tells you whether or not it's the blue minion, the gray, the red or the yellow. You're then going to select uh, three of these to keep and one to get rid of but remember you're only going to get two of them by the time uh, all cards have been placed before the actual scoring begins so you're only going to get two that you're going to need to basically try and score at the end of each round. After after every single player has done that, you're going to draw one of these bad maps cards and flip it over. And then you're going to begin with the first player, placing down on the board and going in clockwise order from one all the way down to five. So starting with ones on each of the different colors, then you go to twos and threes and so on and so forth. And as you do that, it's going to be dependent if it's face up or face down based on these bad map cards. And uh, finally, everybody is going to go around until all the cards have been placed face down. After that,
that happens. You're then going to discard one more of these additional round cards. You're then going to reveal the uh, basically reveal the mechanical movements for each of the characters in order based on these little this little follow tokens. Wherever wherever is placed first is where it's going to go clockwise. And then they're going to move around, bumping into each other, falling in the ocean, falling into traps, trying to get to that X marks the spot in the middle of the board. If they can uh, reach that spot, that means they're going to be in first place. And if they're the second closest, it's second place and third and so on and so forth. And so you're just trying to arrange them in a correct way. You don't know exactly where everybody's moving their other minions, but you can have an idea as to where they're going to be moving them. And finally, you're going to then reveal your objectives, see how well you did, and start the next round with basically the same thing. The only thing is you get additional, like the spyglass uh, if you're in last place, and that'll give you more abilities to allow you to utilize throughout the game. And finally, at the end of the game, whoever has the most points or score the most victory objective points is going to be the winner of the game Bad Maps. That's how you play it. I'll go ahead and show you down below what's going on, and then we'll come up and I'll explain what I think about it. So we went ahead and set up round one for three players, and uh, I went ahead and also gave every single player their cards to start with and their objective cards here. The first thing that they're going to do is set aside the round two. They won't be using that until the next round. And then they're going to go ahead and look at their objectives and choose to keep three. Now this one here says if the red minion uh, gets last place, he gets three points. If the gray minion gets first place, he gets three. If the red gets first or second, he gets two. And if the uh, blue minion gets first or second place, he uh, gets two points. Kind of determine what you want as far as these go and get rid of one. So maybe I'll get rid of the blue one here. So he, he won't be taking that along with him for this first round. And every player will do the same as well. Just pick them at random here. Finally, make sure you have your player deck and of course your captain and a spyglass. We'll just choose the green player to go first. And I put the minion token next to him because whenever he places down the first time, that's going to be uh, where the minions are going to start and continue their movement mechanically. Then you're gonna draw one of these cards here and flip it face up. That's going to represent the uh, way in which you place the cards from one to five, one to five, one to five. And whenever you place, you have to go from lowest to highest. So this player is going to start and he's gonna go ahead and look at his hand. I have the basic setup here. So if he uses a spyglass, it just lets him look at a card face down. But he, if you wanna see what he wants, he wants to have uh, yellow in last place, gray in last place, or yellow in first and second. So probably wouldn't, uh, he probably would've discarded one of these two likely instead of that red one. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and try and make sure that gray is in last place. So he's gonna go ahead and pick one of these cards here. He sees that one here. He probably wants to turn that one, uh, and you look at here, the symbol here, this is east. So he wants to move that guy east. So he'll take this card and he'll place it right there. And as you can see, it is black, so it goes face down. After he's done placing that, the next player is then gonna get to go. And you're gonna go ahead and see what he or she wants. And you've got uh, first in place, first place or last place with red, uh, first, second, or last place, and then first place with uh, with white. Now, the thing is with this one here, gray, uh, he, we don't, he doesn't know uh, which way or in what direction he, he the green player moves. So he could be hoping that he's also trying to get it to first or second place, but, it's dangerous as to whether or not you're gonna place there. So will he place there? Uh, maybe, probably. So maybe he'll actually just not want to chance it. Maybe he wants to guarantee it. So he's gonna go for west. He's gonna look for the west orientation and he's gonna place that like this and it's gonna go face up based on this one here because it's in the second slot. And then we're gonna continue. This player over here is looking to make blue first or last. And then uh, this one has to be this one has to be first or second place. So we'll go ahead and go for blue, I suppose. And the blue's right here, so he already knows that he's right there, so he's gonna try and move that guy. Let's go two spaces, so we'll take this two card here and place it to face down just like that. And then the round's just gonna continue. It's gonna keep going around in a circle as players place down their cards, and uh, then it, the game is going to, the round's going to be over once all the cards have been placed. I'm just gonna actually go ahead and divvy these up randomly. This is not normally how you'd be able to place it, but that's that's okay, we'll just, we're just divvying them up anyway. Um, just so you get an idea of how the movement works, because I think you get how, how the rounds kind of work. And you're probably not going to be using all of your cards, but anyway, that, that, that's kind of what it's, what it's going to look like nevertheless. So, all right, let's go ahead and show you how it works now. Remember that the two and threes are always going to be the ones that were face up, so these were played face up. Uh, these were played face up, uh, these were played face up, and finally these were played face up. So that's what it should look like at the end of the round after everybody's placed from one to five in whatever uh, 
way they wanted to do it as long as they followed the rules of placement. And of course, these two are face up. Uh, then after that, every single player is going to look at their round cards and select to get rid of one. So maybe he wants to get rid of this one because he thinks he's going to get blue in first. He wants to go ahead and get rid of maybe the first and second place because he was actually trying to get yellow to be in last place at the end of the game. And then finally, this one over here, he's going to also get rid of uh, red because he's hoping to get red in last place. All right, so now the minion token. This was actually uh, placed on the first minion that was placed in the game, which was this guy here. It was the uh, it was the gray minion here. And how it works is it simply starts off by doing this. You flip this over, and then uh, we move it east. So we're gonna turn this guy east. Then it goes clockwise, like that. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess I guess it would go uh, this way, I suppose, um, as long as you did in whatever order you wanted. Flipping this guy, okay, the first so blue is gonna actually go two. And remember, whenever you utilize one of these cards, you move it off, just so you remember. And then over here, we're gonna flip this one over, and that's gonna make it go one space. And this is gonna be removed, we don't need that anymore. And then the next one over here is gonna be turning it north. So we'll turn this guy just like that. And then we're gonna go on to twos now, so this will make this guy turn west, which will turn him back the way he wants to go. And this guy's going to go south, which will turn him this way. And this one's gonna move two spaces, so we are yellow, we go two. And then red's gonna turn east, this way. And then we're moving, uh-oh, let's see, south for you. So south, which way are you going this way? And then east, so this guy's going to move this way. And then two spaces for yellow. Uh-oh, he's coming off the side of the board there. And one for red. And then flip this guy over. Let's see how far he moved. One space. And then flip this guy over and south. So south. And then this guy's going to go three spaces. So he falls off the board. When he falls off the board, he ends his movement and goes straight back to where he was. And this is going to be two spaces for it. He falls off the board as well and goes back to where he was. And then the last round here, a north facing for this guy here. And then uh, this one here is going to go west. And then this one, yellow, is going to move one space. And finally, last but not least, is a west facing for... Uh, for red here so that's fun that's exactly where he goes all right and then after that happens then you're going to go ahead and look at all your objective cards and see how you played see how well you did so in this case uh you count how many spaces away one two this is one two three one two three four one two three so uh did this this person get last place yes uh, it was farthest it was i think one two three four one two three he was not the last so he would not get this one here uh this one over here yeah, I wouldn't as well. See, it's, it's based on the, the spaces, how far they are away as to whether or not you're going to score points or not. Um, first place, is, is he would get first place because he was three spaces away. And um, yeah, this one here. So you can kind of tell based on like where the board is. There's some rules as far as uh, ties and whatnot, how that works. But I think you get the idea. Trying to get to the closest space to make sure you're first place and the farthest away to make sure they're in the last place. After that, you clean up everything, give everybody back their stuff, and then you start the next round utilizing these here. You're going to go ahead and pick a new one of uh, these here. And uh, everybody gets their cards back, of course. And the last player is going to get to start, as well as get an additional spyglass that you can use. And a spyglass will let you flip over a card and look at it yourself secretly as the round is going on. And that's the basic idea of how to play bad maps. All right, let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so bad maps, a couple caveats. And the first one is at the end of the round, if a, if a minion is in their starting space, they're disqualified. So if they're, I, as an example, I just showed you how it kind of functioned, but just to give you a little more clarity, if they, basically if they fall into the ocean and they don't move after that and they go back to their starting space and they're there at the end of the round, they, they're not first, second, third, or last. They're nothing. So that can hurt, hurt you, definitely. Another thing too is at the, the back of these cards are either going to indicate that there's a direction in which they're going to be facing or whether they're going to be moving. And uh, the last little thing is some of these cards you can move backwards or forwards. Uh, you, you just have to look at that yourself in, in your hand. There's moving one, two, and three, and then moving backwards one and two or something like that. Um, those are the most important little aspects of the game. Otherwise, the end of the round, you're going to actually put your characters all back to the start. And additionally, you're going to take these little holes and place them where your characters once were previously, thus 
thusly changing the map and how it is going to play. Um, but for the most part, I think you get the game. I think you understand how it functions. There's a couple of caveats to ask to the different abilities. I'll go ahead and read one of these guys here. The teal caption says, when you play a map card in a face down map slot, you may instead place it face up. If you do, flip over a used spyglass token. So you can kind of give more information away to get more information with this guy. And all the captains have their own unique abilities. Additionally, the pits kind of function the same way as the water does. If you bump into somebody, they're going to be pushed as well. And if you fall into the ocean, you reset just as long, just as well as the pit here. And the pits also have little walls on them. So if you bump into that, it just kind of like is a 2D video game. It just goes bump, 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 and you can't keep moving after that. Anyway, what do I think about bad maps? Well, this game's cool. I like the movement-based placement. I like the fact that you're all working together to not work together all at the same time. Some of you might be trying to get the same characters first and or second place. Some of you might be trying to be at odds with each other. Like, you definitely don't want red to be first because you need blue to be first. And you and, and maybe I need yellow to be last, but you need yellow to be first. So in that case, people are trying to figure out where and how people are placing certain things. Sometimes it might be better to push a person off the board if you need them in first place because they're so far away uh, that it might give you a little more um, a chance to have them come back onto the board. And then as long as you move them up that starting space, you'll get close enough to be first, maybe even second place. Just kind of depends on your objectives, right? The second round gets a little more crazy, a little more hectic based on the way the board is shaped and how the different holes are on the board. It can get kind of funky uh, based on the placement of those as well. Bumping into walls, bumping into each other is a lot more likely in that case. And the advanced play is definitely something I would suggest for this game, but the base work, basic works just as well. It's a very nice gateway game into those style movement games, which are placing them down like Robo Rally is what I would explain as. That one's a little more complex and lengthy. This is a little quicker, a little more concise, has a lot to look at as well. It's very beautiful. The boards look really nice. This whole game, I really, really enjoy the look of it. And uh, I, I, I got a lot of my friends who had never played these kind of... Um, I don't know what you would call them. Uh, somebody's going to probably tell me in the comment section what it's called, but placing the cards down in which to move the workers or move the minions or move the robots. And uh, in which case, things happen. It's, 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 it's random to a point, but it's not too random to where you're like, I have no idea what's going on. You kind of know which way your characters that you want to go are going. It's just, oh, did that player place west or south? I don't know for a fact. Maybe they're trying to mess with me. Maybe they're trying to help me. And uh, you can, of course, do a little bit of table talk if you want, but that might not bode too well because they might be lying to you. Oh, I'm definitely trying to help you with red because I need red to go there as well. So you can add that in as well. The extra side of the board, which I'll go ahead and show you right now, just to take everything off is a completely blank slate, which allows you to manipulate the board as well. There's additional little things like the ghost caves. The ghost caves will allow you to uh, move from one side of the board to the other, and it has little ghost tokens as well. And there's a secondary little uh, two-player way. You can play the game in two players as well, a little variant as, as that's concerned. Overall, I really enjoy the game. It's really quick, really simple. It's a little bit random. If you like the kind of feel the game has based on how I explain it to you, you probably will enjoy this game. If you like the style of artwork and if you like the variability that the game has to offer, uh, as for people that might not like the game, probably people who don't like the random way that the robot, the, not the robots, the minions are going to move, the random way in which the cards are going to be flipped over, and you're trying to do something specifically with the best laid plans, but one card messes you over, that can be kind of frustrating, and if that's the case, probably not for you. But for all of those out you that sound like they might be interested, you should definitely check out the game Bad Maps down below in the description. Check it out by uh, the people who made Sagrada floodgate games an excellent little fun uh, gateway movement style game check it out all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video go and check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment and all this help we do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out bad maps by floodgate games a really cool little game really beautiful stylization of being trapped on an island trying to search for treasure you, you crazy captains out there as well as checking out our website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're giving away the game vindication we're giving away the game uh, too many poops as well as insured uh and i think there's another one too uh feudum jackie's show me how to win season two is coming out so if you want feudum as well as a chance to get there as well as checking out the friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two great sites to give you tons of great giveaways all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to sailing the high seas and then looking for treasure with you randomly via all allocation ne next time <laughs> <laughs>